uh, do you know Leslie Bassett, composer? Yes. Uh, and does he still live? Does he still live? I don't know. Uh, the last time I saw him was about ten years ago. Okay. I don't know many. I don't know many American composers, but he is one of my favorite uh -huh. of them. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. This is called a zeroth order Markov chain. All right. It's a random decision made at that last instance to achieve the new instance. A first order Markov chain would take this last instance into effect. A second order Markov chain would take the last two, third order, last three, fourth order, last four, and so on ad infinitum. Okay? So this is the basic essence of a Markov chain. So we now have two new words in our vocabulary for those of you who have had this before Markov chains and orders. Since this is a 12-point table, if the current value is zero, the probability of getting a 5 out of it is quite high. The probability of getting a 7 out of it is a little lower. Okay. I can play this in this version. Okay. When you've got a flat probability, who knows where it's going to go? So you see the numbers jump around following pretty much this probability curve. Okay. How come when the rules for going to another state? All right. In this case, this particular state machine can take the values 0 through 11. And the rule it has for going to other states is the probability table that is picked out by that by its state, 0 through 11. Okay. And these Probability tables are often called transition matrices, right? Here's another one that has a tendency to go either way, but has uh, a few repeated notes. I'm letting some notes repeat and some mm -hmm. not. <laughs> So you, are you comfortable with what's going on, assuming that you know you're going to get the code to look at and take apart later? Yes. <laughs> okay, the meat of this, of course, is the Markov compose function, the uh, mod octave function, and just kind of a fill up because I couldn't stand listening to those things without at least doing that much. <laughs> okay, now, we're going to go and do a second order. Now, for a second order, I need a trickier table. I need a transitions table that is a two-dimensional, and I'm going to use an array. Look at this from different directions. It's kind of fun to put this in constant rotation and have them being developed. Or put a picture of a body just following that orbit. A few bodies trailing one after another. Yeah. Are the attractors as evident in the individual dimensions? No. You can't see the attractors until you actually do a 3D representation of it. Okay. Or could, hear them? Well, uh, well you, yeah, you're not going to hear them well. So it's, it's monotonically descending. And what that means is, if two things are, if two set classes are, are more similar, the angle between them will be smaller. So that's a basis for calculating similarity. Maybe I'll actually switch into open music at this point. Uh, on purely intervallic criteria, the, the 048 is, is less similar. 
So let's try to get something really similar. In other words, we should expect a small number. If we do, for example, a just a major triad, yeah. yeah. Zero, four, seven. Okay. Of course, it won't matter if I transpose this. We're just comparing inclusional features. So I could, instead of zero, four, seven, this could be transposed up by two. So it'd be two, six, nine. A D major triad. Doesn't matter. Yay, a nice smaller number. Okay. So that's working the way we want it to, as long as we know what we're asking. Curiosity, if you add a 13 on the second one, 2, 6, 9, 13. Add 13 yeah. on the second one? Okay. Yeah. And I can, because even though that's out of the pitch class range, it'll get it'll bug, pulled right? in, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, well, there it is. That should be much closer, right? That's a major, that's a major oh. seventh. Instead, triad, of a, instead of double. Instead of a, yeah. And I don't see know. what it looks like. See what it looks like. It'll come in probably close, but not quite as similar, yeah. Hmm. So that makes sense. That's pretty intuitive, I think. So one more thing I'll say about that, of course, a lot of those sounds actually have inharmonic components and so on. So it makes the idea of pitch a little bit more complicated. But what I did when I designed these sounds is I designed the spectra so that sometimes instead of having, you know, if I've got a chord with three notes, instead of playing a sound that's pitched at each of those notes, I just choose one sound that had prominent partials in all three of those frequencies. So this is called Ark, after Noah's Ark. All right. Okay. So the the rationale for the game, or the, the point of the game, essentially, is simply to get your pieces to the other side of the board before this person gets their pieces to your side of the board completely. All of them in the other rank. No pieces are taken. It's a completely non-violent game. Aww, and, and the interesting pieces. thing about that is that you really can't tell who's ahead during the game because you can't count the pieces, you know, the dead bodies as you can in chess or in checkers, right? And it really does, it, it, it actually makes it more interesting. This is the frog. Uh, probably the most powerful piece in the board. It can leap, okay? And it can leap like checkers do. It can leap as many times as it wants to as long as there's something to leap over. And there's been some mighty powerful long distance moves. You know, moves to this side over here and back over to here. You know, 20, 20 shots at a time to get it into a very strategic position. And oh, you have four strategic. other dark ones, <laughs> and you can move them Tell all back. Okay. What okay. I mean? But if, but or the this leader has to be on one of the. Well, you can only move your players. So oh, no, if no, you're no, gonna, no, yeah. So in this case, it would have to. It doesn't have to be either end. <laughs> <laughs> you could do. I'm so proud of myself. This is a team for you. Now I'm working. <laughs> I win chimes. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer, of course, is they're algorithmic composing instruments. Yes. The wind composes the instruments. The only thing the creator of the wind chime does is create the, the tuning and the choice of pitches. 
otherwise the wind does the rest. And they're from all over the world. My favorite is still this one, <laughs> where the only sound is made by the birds. And this one, which is... What was the number of this case? This is 1599. 1599. I'll call it, uh, your name is Kat. Okay. Well, well uh, statement. Oh, you made two oh. question marks, see? Right. Now we, now it doesn't know what's going on. You see, if you don't, okay. so. now it's confused. Huh. It doesn't know his name. So now make a statement, your name is Kat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, your name is Kat. Okay, well, it only, one know, it only knows one name at this rate, right? Yeah. So now you've got to tell your name, I guess. But you, could do that. Or you could say no, but then again, I only yeah, it might think your name is what then, or something. My name is right? Evans. That's a possibility. <laughs> the name is Kat. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did it say? We switch from one temporal rhythmic feeling to another, so.
So hopefully you can detect a, a clear sense of rhythmic difference between the two regions. Well, maybe not that clear. I mean, maybe it's actually quite subtle, but to me it's, it's very meaningful. And, um, and also at the same time, a sense of connection between these two areas. They're connected by a, a musical element that's similar in its, that, that's self-similar in its times. <laughs> a little higher value. That's what I'm doing there. And so I'm, ch I'm really inventing little, the likelihood of little three note phrases to come out of this thing. Okay, but I'm not done yet. <laughs> that was a gut reaction. <laughs> How much did you pay to come to this workshop? <laughs> <laughs> and it's Thursday, man, <laughs> of the first week. I got my money's worth in the first two days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is that guy that went to the bar for two weeks? Oh, right. Well, yeah. I will happily discuss this with you <laughs> in a way that says, okay, let's go a little further here. It's more like plus. Well, so the so the way the let works, the first thing has to be the name of the variable, mm -hmm. and then the value. And so the you have to give it a name first. Okay. So I need to do somewhere. I do somewhere like in another place. Yeah, it should be in... Right, okay, so some first. So first... And then, then the value. Should I give it another Maybe I give it another name, because it's not really a song, right? It's more like... A, what do I say? First... Um, first uh, one. And then... And value, it would be first number, right? Well, no, you already no. have those. It's going to be oh, yeah, yeah. first number plus second, right? Yeah. So then. The so here you do your actual equation. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So the, the, these ones that I'm. I think you're on the same. The problem is our copy is just a terrible one. Okay. Yeah. A. So did you figure out how to get your. Zero. 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 Zero.
an algorithm right here in the next beat. Sorry, the next one. Here we go. Again, this is the more or less way in which I, I like to compose. I like to take a long time. I like to work things out in my head. I'm, I'm never, I, I rewrite things. My wife will tell you where she hear that, for example, the book, my last book, I mean, I don't mean just the one I'm finishing now, but the, the last book that I'm ever going to write is being, is, is finished as we speak. And I, I think I'm on my 14th draft. Hmm. And when I, I say it's my last, but it probably won't be. I'll probably bring it out and do it again and again and again. Uh, I just appreciate that way of working, and 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 because uh, I, I want it to be not right necessarily, because I don't know what that means. But I I want to I want to feel comfortable with the output, and and so this piece was the same sort of way. In fact, I'm still sort of rewriting it now uh, to get to get it the way I, I think I truly want it. So during all the time that I was working with uh, experiments in musical intelligence, which as I've already stated, I really wanted a whole cloth output. And I hope that they have those timbres here and that we're hooked up enough to play this. Okay. Now, if I'm happy and, and I don't, my curiosity is not driven, I can simply add another measure to that, add two measures to that, and continue to work. It's 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 not like you usually work, um, but it's a it's a it's it's for me it's comfortable. But the whole reason I'm showing you this is what if I'm curious about how the program would would uh, extend this in some way. 
Okay, so then I just ask for extension. And I say I want to extend to COP1. I, I can choose the amount, which is a, probably the number of notes, so I'm going to increase that to 24 in, in this case. Uh, and then I'm going to compose. What do you use for notation? CMM. So here's the addition that I may or may not like. Could be the same. Uh, it looks like I have a, a second page, so it is it is different. Okay, so let's hear the extension this time. Not entered. Uh, well, it did before other uh, second second page business. Shoot. I say shoot because usually it produces some bad ones. Now, of course, I'm the only arbiter here. I'm the only aesthetic engineer. I don't care what you think. So I tell my students in composition class the very first day: if you want to be a composer, stop caring what anybody thinks. You're the only one that matters. It is an egotistical profession. So, from my viewpoint. <laughs> Those were both pretty good, and I think that I might actually, you know, consider saving them and, and continuing from there on. Okay? Now, if it was a serial piece and I had lots of music here, it, first of all, you notice all 12 pitches are there, <coughs> I'm assuming, right? E flat, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, A, B flat, B. The distributions are not equal. Now, they wouldn't be with this small amount of music. Uh, so, they're okay. It might be almost 12 tones. Certainly, the the, the, the program hasn't extended beyond reasonable doubt of the serialism. This is a, 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 a cross thatch where I can place anything against anything. For example, right now, its duration and pitch are associated in this triangulation. So you see uh, pitch going to the right, and, and you see my pitch range that I've covered. You can see that in a previous chart. In relationship to, to I guess, uh, durations of, and you can see them, there's a quarter note there, a half note, a dotted half, and so forth. And all going out to, to a double, uh, uh, what is that called in, in ancient notation? Uh, a brev, I think. The original once more. And the restored. So the reason I'm showing you this is this particular way of computing this requires lots of FFTs. of it. Um. Now, is this, this is a musical issues verbal spiel, though, of yeah, sorts, right? Uh, only I didn't wrote uh, 11 personnel.
granular synthesis is building a sound, not necessarily a continuous tone, out of a whole bunch of tiny grains of sound. And it originated with Einstein's idea of acoustic phonons, which were later proved like a few years after he proposed that they existed. So that's pretty what? cool. Einstein proposed that there were, you know how there are photons? Mm -hmm. For he light. He proposed that, for what? For light. For light? Right. He proposed that there were acoustic phonons. Oh, that's cool. So I don't know if that terminology is still used, but that's like one of the basis of waveform. granular synthesis. Yeah. Exactly. Like, really, really tiny, waveform. tiny waveforms. Wave Waveless. And so what this program does, <clears throat> which is a really, like, ridiculous way to do it, but I just really wanted to do it, um, is creates a whole bunch of MIDI grains. So every single note is a grain. So whereas usually you'd create them using sound, like actual sound, like a sample, a tiny little piece of a sample, I'm just creating a whole bunch of MIDI events and lining them all up, which is why it takes about 10 minutes to create them and load them into a So, and I was going to put in a module that would enable me to do particle synthesis, which is a more complicated version of granular synthesis, but I didn't have time, so I'm not going to explain what it does, because it doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> it does look cool, doesn't it? It looks cool. Yeah. Um, That's the important thing. You can also specify what the type of cloud you want is. Mm -hmm. So there's synchronous clouds, which are... So, here's the piece. Do you want me to press play? Yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> can't take the suspense. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm trying to build these uh, uh, functions that I could use in um, in open music as subjects. You know, before I came here, I didn't know that it was possible, but actually, that's like a, I think that's a really powerful thing. That like uh, because if you work a little bit in open music, then you will find that. Uh, that there are some things that you cannot do or you don't know how to do or or, or you know you have to like Paul was showing you need to connect a lot of cables and uh, so I guess if you know how to do, write that in code you can really simplify your life so you see this is the one, the one that I gave it a melody I wrote I, I, I didn't do the random thing I just gave it my own melody which I mean I, here just to prove the point I gave I gave like a really lippy melody just to <laughs> you know, to make sure it was changed I don't even know how this sounds One of the transformations that I used in my master's thesis, which I won't, I did last time, but I won't do this time, is to take this map of all intervalness, which is on a 12-tone scale, and map it out over a diatonic scale. And so when you do that, you do, you do get repeated notes over the last four, because they become the, the second, third, fourth, and fifth of uh, the scale. And so by octave transposition, you can have melodies that, that have repeated notes in them and stuff like that. And that was a technique I did use in my master's thesis. And so I've been using that for other kinds of tech, for other kinds of uh, manipulations. That's another thing I won't go into. But uh, one of the rows that I that I came up with out of my head when I was sitting there is, is slightly different from the uh, all interval row, and I've set it this way. <laughs>
uses that mapping technique in it. So this is now a diatonic melody, which is, has a numeric basis in the rows you just heard. <laughs> was uh, uh, kind of triggered by Peter's uh, playing of uh, some, uh, you know, simple sonifications of a logistic map, which I thought was kind of nice, but when you, when you run the logistic map, this is actually, uh, you should probably remember this, I think Peter put up something like this, this is the bifurcation diagram, so this is like the main parameter that you tune, right, that main constant there that multiplies x times 1 minus x. And wherever you run it, you kind of have a choice between one of two evils, from my point of view. When I listen to, to Peter's demos, you either, you either just get a couple oscillating tones back and forth, or you get something which is chaotic and then it sounds, well, more or less like a random number generator. So that was my impression when I heard it the first time. Of course, I didn't know about the cool tricks uh, triggering onto the, uh, the wind controller they showed us yesterday. That was quite a bit more convincing. But, but my idea was, uh, was a little bit different looking at this. I thought this could be interesting if you actually tuned that parameter as you as you over time, right? So you start out way on the left hand side. Actually, that, that parameter doesn't start where you normally normally start. It starts way back here and go through that regime with just one pitch and then listen to it split into two and then multiple. And actually, well, the way the structure actually works, you go into the chaotic re regime and then back out of it many times as you tune along there. So that gives you kind of an interesting repeated structure where you go from a few notes to kind of the in between pitches and then back to a few notes again. Um, so that's what this uh, uh, little uh, piece, so-called, is about. It's more of an idea than a piece. So you heard the first split there.
this, but I think there's some idea you can maybe run with. There's some interesting structure to be exploited that, uh, I don't know, at least Peter hadn't heard of it being done before. I don't know. Uh, I think to all the, the students in the seminar, the, the faculty, I'm sure I'm speaking for them as well, that this has been a, a fabulous two weeks. You're an incredible group, and I hope that you keep up with Lisp and keep up with algorithmic music, and we would all love to hear from you, either personally one-on-one -on -one, or through our, you know, our, our system of, of the ways in which we can communicate not only with this class but with the previous two. But you're a great bunch of folks. We really enjoyed it. and. Um, We'll now find out in the next half an hour how much you enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> as we read through very carefully. And it's uh, got mid white spots with a black, uh, a velvety black uh, background on its bottom. Uh, and that's here now. You're talking about here now? And Hawaii. No, I'm talking about here. Oh, here? Yeah. What is going for here? What's your I'm trying to figure out why somebody would want to die here is it when they had maybe the option to go to Kauai or to Maui. We have, because there I snorkel, and the fish uh, have, we have, a greater, we have a greater variety of starfish. Uh, we, have, we have most of the sea slugs that are around the world. We have a great variety of sea anemone. But you're right. Indeed. Oh, it's back this way. Yeah, it's back we, the other side of town. Oh, I thought we were going the other way. So I don't go. I do a lot of close to. Well, I don't go. Oh, no. Neither do I. The speed limit is just fine. I want to shake hands with everybody, so give me your hands, whether you like it or not. I want to make sure everybody's safe here. California puppies.
so that was a full year. And it was built five years ago. Yeah. We were in there before then. But. Yeah, 96 was when we opened the main part of the building. Uh -huh. But the place where we're working was opened in 2000. 2000. Five years ago. Yeah. So my office was only five years ago. Ha, 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 ha.